Why is it the moment we walk into a school, suddenly everything outside of those four walls is suddenly considered the real world? <laughs> now, I asked that question actually knowing the answer. All of us have much greater responsibility now than when we were 15. But the interesting thing is that 15-year-olds use the same language. How many of us have heard the pertinent teenager say, when am I going to use this in the real world? But they have a point. They know that there really is something a bit artificial about their experience in school. I would suggest that we can and should change that experience, that we can move schooling into the real world in three distinct ways. First, with the way that we teach. Secondly, with the culture that we build. And thirdly, with the tools that we offer to the students. Now, I'm a teacher, so I'll talk about teaching first. Traditional teaching typically follows a simple recipe. Teach the students something. Give them some questions or problems. Assess them with a test. You probably recognize this as the way that school has worked. But it's not the way that life works, is it? Life isn't so kind as to offer us a lesson before we need to know it. <laughs> In life, problems come first, right? You crash your car first, then you figure out how you're going to get it fixed or buy a new car. So why not make school work this way? Well, I work at a school where we believe that students can achieve much more if we take a lesson from life and we give students the problem first. And this does two things. Number one, it creates a need to know the ideas and standards. And secondly, it gets the students actually asking for instruction. So we get the problem and then instruction with collaboration, and then we can move on to assessment. What I'm describing is project or problem-based learning. And in project-based learning, students are dealing with a different kind of question. In the last semester at NextGen, Students dealt with uh, problems like these. I'll give you examples. In a combination biology and PE course, students answered the question, how could our understanding of human cell function and organelles allow doctors to correctly diagnose certain illnesses? In a humanities course, students answered this question. How can we design a tour of modern day Europe so that the participants will have a deep understanding of the causes of World War I. In a physics course, students answered this question. How can we take skid marks on the road and analyze them so that we can determine the cause of a car crash that caused the skid mark in the first place? So it's not just the order of the way things occur in the classroom, it's also the quality of the questions. These are real questions from the real world that create real engagement. So that was teaching. If we want to make schools real, we've got to address culture. What do I mean? If any of you take away a great idea from any of the talks today, I guarantee you, you're going to talk to someone else about it. Why? Because that's the way we learn, through interaction and making connections. We create a culture of understanding. And isn't that the opposite of what we fear? That student moving through the school day anonymously, never making connections with others around them. So building culture at schools comes down to affording opportunities for the students and the teachers really to make connections. And in NextGen, we do that on a regular basis at all levels. At the project level, where students work collaboratively so that they have to talk to each other. At the classroom level, where students meet in an advisory class every day with the same teacher who gets to know each student deeply. To the whole school level, where all of the members of the community can get together to celebrate the successes of individuals and of the group. Community and culture are not easy to build in a school of 4,000 students. Which is why our school is designed to be 400 students, 9 through 12. So teaching, culture, lastly, tools. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you in your professional work have ever used the word project to describe your work? Raise your hand. OK, you can put your hands. Those of you who raise your hands. How many of you use a computer daily? Raise your hand. 
right? If we're going to give students work of the world, give them the tools of the world, right? Which is why we give each of our students a laptop computer, but we do so with care. We give them the computer as a tool, not as a toy, and certainly not as a teacher. Students are producing with their the technology in the same way that you, as a professional, produce with your technology. So why do this? Why focus on making school real? Simply because it works. We have seen students go from previously being dependent upon teachers, just waiting to be told what to do, now taking initiative in their learning. We're seeing students who were previously timid problem solvers, afraid to get the wrong answer, now intrepid problem solvers, who understand that getting the wrong answer is oftentimes necessary to getting a better answer. We're seeing students who were previously working in isolation, now working collaboratively and effectively. And lastly, we're certainly seeing one student named Jacob, who previously had to be told to do his homework every night, now having to be told, Jacob, put your homework away and go to bed. <laughs> if I sound like a parent, it's because I am. And Jacob is my son at this school. <laughs> Teaching, culture, tools. Effective enough. So that when, say, Sean Garcia leaves my classroom like he did the other week and says, Yo, Dan, keep it real. I can say, we are Sean, we are. 